everyone, and welcome to Wine Talk, where we uncork the wine to tell the truth. This is your host, Krishan Lampley, and why Wine Talk? Why do I do this? I want to bring together wine experts, influencers, cool people, bloggers, writers, W set experts, Somalis, you name it, to talk about wine. So what happens is they receive a bottle of Love Corkscrew. I have no idea which one they're receiving. I have no clue, no clue which one they got. And we open it up on air and we uncork the wine to tell the truth and talk further. So I'm so excited to have Angela McCray here from It's Uncorked and Cultured, correct? Correct. Yay, yay. So excited to have you here. It's such an honor. And thank you so much for doing this. And again, I have no idea what bio she has, y'all. I have no idea. So <laughs> let's see. I'm excited. Which one did you get? Oh, I got something that I'm really excited about. Too. Ooh. Okay. So I've been you guys have... by the Lampley collection. Girl, so for those of you that are watching, that's watched the last few wine talks, there is like literally only a select few that received that. Again, I did not pick. It was random. And I'm so excited that she has the Lampley. That one is true to my heart. It's so true to my heart. So yeah, let's let's uncork it. Let's talk while you're uncorking it. Tell, of course, everyone, tell the Love Corkscrew posse about you and what's going on in your world. Well, there's so much going on in my world. Um, I don't even know where to start. You know, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's good to finally meet you. I've been following your journey, reading up on all the amazing work you're doing. And I'm just, uh, you know, humbly and gratefully, um, enthusiastically <laughs> honored thank to you. be here with you and, and share space with you. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, you know, I'm, I'm knee deep into planning the uh, Association of African American Vintners um, Annual Symposium. So, yes, yes. So, so that's the triple A V. Yes, you guys, for you guys that don't know, that's the African American Vintners Association. Love Cork should belong to it. And it is just a great space uh, for women and BIPOC and all of us to really get together um, and to, to talk wine, to, to uh, uplift each other, to help each other, because you know we're such a very small, small portion of this entire industry. What, an $130 billion industry, there's less than 1% of us. So um, yes, so yeah, that's very exciting. When is that again? May 20th through the 22nd. It's gonna be taking place in Oakland and Napa. Yes, yes, yes. So we're excited because we're gonna be doing the first AAAV Wine Festival. That's so cool. That's and the so organization cool. is celebrating 20 years. So, Krishan, I hope, I hope you'll be there pouring your wines. Yes, I want to so bad, so bad. Phil is great, and, and I'd be very honored to, uh, to be there. So let's cheers and let's talk. So, chin chin, and again, I'm so happy you have the Lampley, and you have to tell me what you think. <laughs> mm. I'm so excited you have that. Mm. <laughs> this is beautiful, Krishan. This is absolutely beautiful. It's That's my baby. Light, it's effervescent. You know, the bubbles kind of prick tickle your, your palate as soon as you put it in there. I'm not a SOM, I'm only level one W set. That's so. fine. I, yeah. I always say it does not matter. You like what you like, you enjoy it, drink it, don't overthink it, and there'll be 99 smiles with 100 different answers. So, whatever you think, you feel that is true to the varietal. With the prickliness, what I'm getting, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting fruit like apple, you know, brioche. I'm getting more of a creamy sparkling than a, you know, citrusy grapefruit sparkling. So I'm loving that because it, to me, it gives it a lot more fullness in my mouth. Um, I also got some fried chicken on the side. Just, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that okay? That is just fine. <laughs> you could enjoy it however, however you want. Bubbly and fried chicken is absolutely amazing. So, heck yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that is so I don't amazing. Know. That is amazing. Okay, y'all. She she has a $50 bottle of demi sex with fried chicken, and that's absolutely sexy to me. That's so awesome. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, let's let, let's dive deep. Let's dive deep and then I'll, I'll, I'll touch on the Lampley um, because I think this will connect to, to everything that, that I want to discuss. There is, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go straight controversial on you. Ooh. There was um, an event that one of my staff did, and one of the questions asked was, 
Krishan, were you thinking about the market, the market space, the marketplace, when you came up with the lamp lathe, the reserve line? So they weren't referring to love corkscrew, they were referring to the lamp lathe. And you know, we can always interpret uh, questions and certain things a different way. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes I, I get very sensitive and I think, you know, what do you mean by that? You know, because I have my mother on the label, what, what's the thought of that? So, you know, it, it's a certain thing that I believe, again, being this 1%, it's not just others that think of us as, um, they're not used to us being in this industry. It's our own that aren't used to us being this right, industry. Right. So a lot of questions are asked. Um, so I'll ask the general question of, has there been moments where you felt a little sensitive um, towards questions that were asked of you or thought processes of you being, even touching this industry, however you're touching the industry? Um, has there been times you're like, really, really? You know, um, <clears throat> I started my wine journey literally during the pandemic, right? Like when we all were kind of stuck in the house, I became a wine ambassador. Prior to that, I probably went to a handful of of um, vineyards in like Santa Barbara, LA region, um, and then South Africa, right? And so um, the thing that I think was the most kind of like shock was when I had a conversation with a, a journalist out of Florida, a white man who, who owns a publication out of Florida. And I was um, promoting the International Winemakers Summit, um, which takes place in February during Black History Month. And it usually features black winemakers. And he, as a journalist, and as a journalist has been around for probably well over five years or more, he was shocked and questioned the fact that there was black winemakers. Wow. And for me, that was interesting because of course, you know, at the time I partnered with Mar Marcy Jones yes. of Urban Connoisseurs who actually yes. created this, yes. um, you know, this summit. And I knew what her vision was and I was excited to, you know, be a media partner on that. and. You know, so I was like, you know, doing the due diligence, getting the word out there. But the fact that he, the ignorance of him, but what I can say to his credit is that even in his ignorance, he was really intrigued and he wanted to support and attend. Um, but he he was expecting to be in person, right? <laughs> he right. wanted to take too much. Right. But that was super astonishing. Now, part time on the weekends, I also worked at a um, local wine shop here in Harlem. And um, to be honest with you, I haven't had any you know, unfortunate experiences with um, people as I either introduced them to, to black owned wines, because that's my thing, uncorked and cultured. You know, we have a directory of over 100 black wine entrepreneurs, which Krishan is featured in. <laughs> and so we, you know, that's part of my job, right, is not only do I help the customers, but I help to bring in black owned wines. And, you know, I, I sell them to everybody. I don't care who it is. Like, I'm exactly. And I've never gotten any negative um, feedback or pushback, you know, well, especially not from non-Black people. I'll say this, you know, being in the industry so long, I'm grateful you have not, um, but just get your, your bootstraps on and know that, that, you know, it is just part of it. And, and when I say that, you know, I'll say in the general sense, that's anything, right? That, that's any um, situation that you're a very minute part of, whatever the larger picture is, that there's always gonna be questions like, like, why are you here? Not quite sure, well, I don't understand. And it's not necessarily always negative. It could right. be just tell me more, help me understand. So how did this? But sometimes I feel that we have to kind of do our due diligence before we give any negativity towards what we're asking. Um, there, there's, there's, I'm gonna sound old, there's the Google you know, take a look, <laughs> look it up. See well, I will say so this, much. I did attend my first wine wine uh, industry um, conference, um, Vin Expo here in New York. It was my first like official wine event, right? Um, where it's like hundreds, if not thousands of people there, like distributors, yes. producers, everybody's in the room. It's like the, you know, type of event where everybody who's somebody in the wine industry is at. And yeah. so, that was an awkward experience only and it was in from an energetic standpoint right like literally i walk in i don't see people a lot of people that look like me i really don't see anybody you know i think the first mm -hmm. person i saw was jackie from um sorrel 
um, the liqueur company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of like chopped it up a little bit. Um, I did have a couple of awkward moments of just, you know, approaching a vendor um, and them just kind of like looking at me, didn't know how to kind of communicate with me because, you know, they didn't know who I was. They didn't, you know, they didn't know how to, uh, you know, ask me who I was. It was like this, you know, weird, you know, barrier that, and I'm just sh showing up like, this is my first time. So I'm eager, I'm enthusiastic. Um, you know, there was this moment where there was a woman who I believe was one of the organizers um, and a black uh, guy who was pouring this rosé and they was just talking French to each other, right? And so I'm just standing there like, you know, I don't speak French, but I'm just standing there like in awe at their like passion and their excitement right. of communicating with each other. And then at some point um, she was like, they were like, I like spoken English and I said, oh, you don't speak French. Oh, how funny, because you were like just so engaged. Right? right, and I was like, no, I was just, you know, being pleasant and enjoying the conversation. I love it, I love it. Also it also made them feel awkward, though. like it was like, then it kind of like, it got a little awkward and I was like, sorry. Right? <laughs> like, I'm just happy, I'm just happy to enjoy this experience. I know exactly what you mean uh, with the energy, that, that a lot of times you might not understand it, you may not fully grasp it yet, but just the energy of the body language. And that's in a lot of spaces. I'll never forget doing the Buckingham Wine Festival eight years ago. And all of our signs were up for all the different um, wineries. And I remember looking at some of them like, oh gosh, that's Argentina and that's French and all these huge ones, right? Uh, South African. And I'm like, oh God, nobody's gonna come to love corkscrew. Kid you not. We had the longest line wrapped around the wine fest because people are like, what is that? Love, cork, screw, whatever that is, we want a part of it and we need it now. <laughs> so Marketing never, so it, it's huge in this energy and that's a great transition um, that I would like to talk about that I think, and I've mentored a lot of people in this industry about that. Um, it's almost like I, I, I compare it to uh, having an old school mixtape and having amazing rapper or amazing singer, but they're never heard. But yet you have, I won't name names of different wine, but different large brand wine companies that you're like, oh, this is not that great. However, their marketing is genius. Genius. What do you think about just in general, um, as far as BIPOC and women and the marketing efforts um, that that we're doing now to, to really get seen? It's amazing. I mean, like when I first kind of got into the space in 2020, I was looking for community. I was looking for black wine lovers, black wine um, enthusiasts, black wine communities. And there weren't a lot. Um, there was a black wine lovers group on Facebook. There was black girls wine society. And then I found out about Hugh Society, which I think really started launching around that time. So it wasn't something yeah. that had been around for a few years. So, but since then it's grown. So I actually worked with Dr. Monique Bell, who's a professor at Fresno State. She did a survey on black wine entrepreneurs. Yes, um, I was in an article with her. I was recently on, on Newsy um, with her. They, they showed uh, her um, amazing uh, study that she did uh, alongside the interviewing me. Yes, yes. And so one of the things that she found out is that there's been this huge increase of Black woman wine entrepreneurs. Yes. So, and this is not just like wine makers, you know, or wine negotiants or, you know, wine brand owners, but educators, yes, marketing and influencer, um, yes. you know, uh, professionals and things of that sort. And so for me, coming from a media marketing mind, you know, I felt like there was something missing. There was a disconnect from the black wine uh, entrepreneurs and the actual consumer, like large scale consumers, right? When I first got in it in 2020, but that has definitely changed. A lot of media outlets have, you know, really highlighted, especially black women wine entrepreneurs um, over the past six months specifically, right? Really, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to commend you and, and all the other amazing women that are doing a damn thing. And 
Um, and, you know, I love to amplify. I share it in my private Facebook group. I put it on our platforms on social media. And, you know, we do have great articles. So we feature a lot of Black women entrepreneurs on uncorpedandculture.com just to be a space where people can go to and get insights and get connected and find Black wine entrepreneurs. And I love that because, you know, when I got into the industry so long ago, um, it was one extreme or another, right? Either people knew nothing about the industry, wanted, were scared and intimidated about it, or they just wanted to own a wine brand because they saw what I was doing or what McBride was doing and, and others were doing. So I'm like, no, there's this huge, amazing space in between that, that you can make way more, mo mo more money than we ever have. You can do so much more for the industry than we ever have. This is an extremely expensive industry. So I'm like, no, get in all that in between and let's actually help each other. So tell me, what do you think about um, just the, the, the way that wine, and, and you probably, probably get more than I could have being in a store and hearing um, the thought press of the younger wine drinkers, the, the new, I'm an old school, I'm a generation Xer, but what, what are you hearing from some of the young wine drinkers? Are they intimidated by it like they used to? Are they looking for sweet, dry? What, what is attracting them uh, to wine? So for the younger um, wine customers that I get in Harlem, um, I, I think most of them are actually open to the journey. Like literally, like we do have a few in the immediate community um, that are probably just starting out in wine that do kind of like look for, like they like it sweet, you know? And I think that's right. most people, whether they're black, white, Latino, yeah. Asian, or whoever, when you're just starting out in wine, you know, then you're probably the opening gates is going to be something that's a little sweet, right? Yep. And so, you know, but what, what I've been, what I like to do is I, cause I'm an explorer. So I like to explore different things. So I like to always suggest something different, something new. And one of the things I can say with our younger consumers, they're always looking for something different and new. They also are very much huge supporters of black owned and woman owned. So yes. if I say like, if they come in and I show them one, that's like maybe from France, another one is from somewhere else, maybe for the 15 and under table, but then I might show them a $20 black owned wine or $25 black owned wine. And everyone will be like, well, let me just get that. And that's something that I can say has been a huge intentional movement that's been happening since 2020 I know people some people was living by this before but I feel like since 2020 it's like it's almost like if not it's black car revolt if you ain't going to black on first you're getting black car revolt. it's intentional yes yes it is intentional and mm -hmm. and I'm loving that I'm loving the intentional to help women uh to help um African Americans in wine and and just the um the explosion of being intentional Mm -hmm. um, in their, what are they finding and spending their money on it and, and, and the offerings that we have. So for you guys, um, again, for you guys to know what Angela is drinking, I'm so excited that she has the Lampley Reserve. That is my reserve collection. I just came out with the Demi Sec. I sourced that out of Healdsburg, which is one of the best areas in the entire country uh, for grape growing. And she has the delicious Demi Sec. It's a semi-sweet, nice and bubbly. And the Lampley Reserve, She's eating with chicken. <laughs> Bubbly and chicken is absolutely amazing, you guys. It, really, it seriously is. Um, and what's so awesome about it um, is, again, the Lampley line was created. Love Corkscrew was created for you. Love Corkscrew was created for you at the consumer and to have fun with the, the Lampley line was created for me, for my lineage heritage and to give honor and to pass on a legacy um, with my last name, which is the Lampley. So I'm so excited Angela has the Lampley Reserve. Angela, tell everyone how they can find you, please. Oh, you can follow me on Instagram at Angela, I'm sorry, <laughs> at Uncorked and Cultured on Instagram. That's uncork and cultured with the D um, on Instagram. We also have a private Facebook group. So if you search uncorked and cultured on Facebook, you should be able to find our, you know, Facebook page as well as our private group. And then of course, once you go to our Instagram page, click on our subscribe to our newsletter. So that way you can actually get updates when we have events. We're actually having one this week with Phil Long, the wine. Oh, yay. Yes. I love Phil. 
So I'm excited to, you know, this will be my first in-person event in Harlem. I'm excited to have Phil and be in conversation with him in person, along with doing a, a four wine flight tasting of his wines. Um, it's going to be led by Charles Springfield. So I'm excited about that. And then also we have a YouTube page. So we produced the um, State of Black Wine Business Forum, which is pretty much where we featured Black wine entrepreneurs and leaders making decisions and making innovate innovations within the industry. And it's a place for you to learn more about it. If you want to become in the industry, if you want to learn more about some folks, we do uh, content featuring um, some of our subconsciously directory, uh, you know, members. So definitely check us out on YouTube as well. And subscribe. Everybody, please, please, please subscribe and check out Uncorked and Cultured. Thank you so much, Angela, for being with us. Cheers to you. Continue being great and com continue to represent us and uh, get the word out there about Black women especially in wine thank you so much for being on wine talk i'll see you guys later follow her please all right thank you see y'all